guys. So, uh, a wrestling company is in uh, financial trouble right now, and apparently they've made a pitch to their owning company, or not the owning company, but a, you know, part owner in Sinclair Broadcasting for funding, and uh, they would not give them the funding, and they would not give them more of a budget. We're going to talk about that. Yes, ROH, Ring of Honor, with such superstars as Roddy Strong, who's not even under contract anymore, Mike Bennett, Maria Kanellis, Moose, the Briscoes. I like the Briscoes. Uh, you have, is Prince Mano still there? I don't know. I, I've been watching quite a bit, I guess, as of late. You've got uh, Truth Martini in the House of Truth, man. Uh, the Decade, they're kind of breaking up Adam Page. All those guys down there. And, you know, they brought up uh, a good point. You know, they brought in uh, Adam Cole and the Briscoes to drop promos. And basically, we're like, we need more funding. We need more money. They're like, Look what's happening. We can be you know, the number two company in the United States. And I think this would be somewhat true because, you know, TNA was on Impact Wrestling. Or TNA uh, Impact Wrestling was on Spike TV. And they were pulling in a million people. And that was with hardly any advertisement, right? Like, Spike didn't really do much to promote them. It was mainly a deal that, you know, they got a million plus people to watch and that was about it. They go to Destination America, and if you guys watch, you know, they started off with 300,000 or so, and they've climbed up to about 500,000 on Destination America, making it the highest watched show on Destination America. Now, before I get too much into that or, you know, read too much into that, one of the things I do want to mention, just like, you know, when I was talking to CM Pulse, is that there are a lot of advertisements for Impact Wrestling. When you watch Destin Destination America, there's commercials at least once an hour. Because they know as a flagship show of the network, they have to advertise it, and the advertising is working. You know, they're pulling in bigger numbers now. Granted, the age demographic is older, but, you know, they said not to read too much into that because, yes, um, it's the same thing with SmackDown being on a Friday. It's more about who watches on Fridays, not so much as of... Um, you know, the, the demographic, it's mainly that's who's home on Friday. And their other show, which premiered about 80,000, went up to about 100,000, the TNA Unlocked or whatever that was. So I think it's, it, ROH is in kind of a weird position because their last pay-per-view did about 8,000 buys, which is, you know, what TNA was pulling in before they stopped, you know, doing so many pay-per-view events. And those numbers were pretty sad. But 8,000 pay-per-view buys for a company that, you know, doesn't get hardly any advertising. Their advertisers themselves are, you know, the painter. I just, I lose my shit when Jay Lethal does the, uh, you know, get the, the painter knee-saving brace today. And, you know, that, those are the big advertisements because it is on more, you know, local cable, which is, you know, kind of disappointing because ROH just put on a, a good show. I like the wrestling. Uh, Nigel I'm kind of getting sick of, but... As far as, you know, the wrestling product goes, they do have a good wrestling product. A lot of the times, it's their production quality, their cameras. It just, it just irritates me. But I think ROH could compete, you know, with the rise of Lucha Underground and, you know, the rise of TNA on Destination America. I think if Sinclair bought Broadcasting actually put some money in, more than the budgets they gave them for 2015 and 2016, I think they could be made somewhat of a viable competitor. But one of the problems... Also is WWE poaching all their talent, you know, the Steens, the Genericos, the Youngers, the, you know, those guys, uh, which it kind of sucks, but at the same time, hey, it's business, it's a company. Um, I want to know what you guys think. Uh, if, if you're Sinclair Broadcasting, you own it, obviously. We know as wrestling fans, we're pretty cheap, and I don't mean to say that in a bad way, but, you know, we, we always complain about the pay-per-views, and I, I bought, before the network, I had paid for a pay-per-view for like a year, a year and a half, paying 44 or 50 bucks because I covered it for a living. You know, I was making YouTube videos, and I thought, well, okay, I'll just pay for it. And then uh, the network came out, and this is, you know, people are still streaming pay-per-views, and I'm like, dude, it's nine ninety nine. Come on, just buy it. Stop being cheap. Go mow a lawn. And, you know, our, as far as our wage goes, I don't necessarily see how they make tons of money. I think their shows pull pretty good numbers. I've been to one. It was fun. It was exciting. I think it was one of Kevin Steen's last shows. Um, no, no, that wasn't. I didn't go to that one. I went to the one a year before that in Rochester. Um, but I definitely do like ROH. I think 
a little, with a little bit more money, just like, you know, TNA or, you know, a better partner, it would work better. But considering they're kind of a part owner and, you know, in control, it makes things a little bit more difficult. So I want to know what you guys think. If they had more funding, would they be able to compete with a company like TNA? Would they be the top second destination? Because obviously they would never pass WWE. And I don't even think TNA will ever pass WWE. But as far as being the second best company in, you know, the wrestling world. Because for a while, I was really enjoying the product. Their pay-per-views I thought were better than TNA. And TNA stepped up a little bit. And then ROH just kind of fluttered, you know, with the whole Michael Elgin debacle and where things went. So, you know, I have it on DVR every single week. Some weeks I watch, some weeks I don't. Some weeks I let it stack up for three. But I want to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on ROH. If they improve a little bit. If they get funding, if they come out there, would it be a bigger company? Because it's working for, you know, Destination America. It really is. It makes sense. Lock and key. There it is. Adam Rose. Adam Rose. Did I just call him Adam Rose? Adam Cole. It's lock and key. <coughs> Excuse me, but no, no. Roddy Strong kicks out. I mean, when you have guys that you can't keep on, you know, contract because you can't afford them, it, it's got to suck. Especially with a lot of the great talent they have, because I really like Roddy Strong. You know, even PWG is, has a lot of guys debuting at their next show that I've never heard of, or that I've heard of, just I've never seen at PWG because a lot of the indie talents are getting picked up. So I think uh, they're going to need money to compete. They're going to be able to need to pay for some of these guys. You know, they just brought in Alberto El Patron, and then he got a concussion. <laughs> so they've got to be in kind of a, a weird situation. And uh, so I want to know your guys' thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. Does more money fix it? Is there just not money in wrestling? Is ROH doomed being on what, Channel 23, the CW, whatever it's called? Ah, let me know in the comment section below, guys.